So we're, we're seeing Anthony Lucas in the 10 minutes we're allowed to watch uh, a lot with that Russian group. Has he been mostly with your group? Is that where you expect him to be, or is it still pretty fluid and he'll be bouncing around? Yeah, I mean, early in camp he's been mostly with the group, but um, he's one of those uh, dual position guys that, I mean, at a moment's notice he can play either the boundary or the field end, and, and really all those guys have to be ready to do that. We're just at a position right now. Uh, being healthy and having the depth, we don't have to move guys around quite as much. But you know, no different than last season. You know, those guys that played and all camp lined up being the primary guys at rush last season. Nick Fig and Solomon Bird. So just got to keep them ready. Yeah, you've lost some pros without them. What does he do best? What's his best skill trait? Where's that? Anthony Lucas. What's his best trait? What's he do best? Uh, just you know, for his size, man, he can bend you know, extremely long. Um, He's really agile. You know, we don't obviously ask him to do it a ton, but he's really savvy in coverage. Kind of reminds me of Thule, uh, bigger dudes, but when you get them in space, they don't move around like, you know, kind of big guys. They, they really have some bend and some good twitchiness to them. So, I mean, he's got, he's got a huge, huge upside, huge ceiling, man, in terms of uh, the ability to rush the passer and and also really strong in things in the run game. So he's, he's what you're looking for. Obviously, Tulio was such a big part of the pass rush, just in general, last season. Do you feel like this group of pass rushers, do you feel like there are different skill sets in that way that have kind of been added? Like, you're, you're able to do more? I know Tulio could do a lot just on his own, but. Yeah, I think there's just more names um, you know, across that defensive front, not just the, the D-line, but in linebacker world, just more names that, uh, when given an opportunity, it, you know, it just seems they can make something happen uh, winning a one-on-one -on -one battle, you know what I mean? I, I, again, I think that was just something that was a, a big area of, of need and focus. Um, you know, you, you just got to have a bunch of guys that can get after the quarterback. And, you know, we had our first scrimmage uh, a couple nights ago, and you could you could see some of that showing up, you know. So I'm, I'd be excited to continue to see these guys' growth. Yeah, Coach Riley talked a lot about how the defensive line has really impressed him during camp and in the scrimmage. Which players specifically have stuck out to you? Yeah, you know, it's hard to pinpoint just one guy. I mean, I, I, and I really mean this. I mean, if you go look at that production sheets or production grades that we give them every day after practice, it, 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 is, it is spread out across the whole D-line and D-front. I mean, all those guys are really, uh, really active and, and doing a great job. And, you know, I, I think the thing that we – we've tried to impart on them is, you know, everybody up front has to be able to win one-on-ones, whether that's at the, the tackle position, the nose position, either edge, you know, you gotta be able to win one-on-ones. I mean, that's that's really gonna be um, a trademark that, that, that I think we have to keep consistent across our defensive front is get guys that when put in those one-on-one -on -one situations, they can, they can be the guy. And so, all of those guys, and being very honest, like all of those guys are really showing up. Is there the, as the time that Ronaldo's missed last season and spring and camp now, kind of set them back a little bit? And then is he getting close to full goal? Yeah, you know, I think it's a reality. You got you to be out on that field to get better and to, to take positive steps and improve. And again, you know, I know he, he, he worked his tail off to get, get uh, you know, as healthy as possible and, you know, got nicked up or whatever. And, you know, it, it's it's going to be huge, huge that when he gets back out here, uh, full go that that he is taking full advantage of these reps because that that time is winding down. I mean, we'll be into game week in, in two weeks or so. You know what I mean? And so, it's uh, time is of the essence, and, and not just for him, for all those guys that you know are missing reps for whatever reason. Man, you, you, that season is upon us. You know, and so they got to be hitting the training room, hitting the rehab, prehab, every every kind of half they can <laughs> to make sure, man, that, 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 that they're healthy and ready to go. What would you say Jamil does best? Uh, if I had to pinpoint one thing, probably rush the passer um, in terms of, you know, on the field, a real cerebral guy. Um, again, I'll, you know, not cliche, I always go back to, you know, he was a high school quarterback and he played quarterback his first year. And so uh, he, he just – you know, has a good understanding of the game, sometimes too much. You know, I get on him a little bit about overthinking and, you know, everything's not this this huge, huge, this component, that component. Sometimes it's just go and get after a guy. So 
But the, I definitely think he, he he adds a lot of value in the pass rushing piece of the game. Talk about him being raw coming in. How has he progressed the most in the spring? Yeah, you know, he, he's improving uh, daily. I think, like I said, I think the biggest jump for him was just really understanding how we do things and, and then, you know, having a new coach and kind of the – the things I'm, you know, I'm pretty structured in terms of, hey, this is when you work this move, this is when you work that move. Here's the look, you know. So just adapting to a different coaching style, and he's super, super, super coachable, um, and, and and doesn't give any resistance that way. Like coach, I just want to get better, and so that makes it easy for me and when these guys are that way. So. He's uh he's improving steadily. Besides being consistent, what are the qualities of a starter in your opinion? Uh, I think production. I think at the end of the day, you know how many plays are you making in that backfield when you're out there? Um, I think, and you spoke to the consistency piece, and, and that trust is a huge factor. I mean, so many times when these guys come out of high school, we only really look at their physical measurables and their traits and this and that, but. One of the hugest, you know, components to, to being a, a starter or being a, uh, you know, a regular on the football field at this level is how consistent they are day in and day out and that trust that they've built with getting their job done. And so that's a huge one. And I think that the competition that we have this year is breeding that because guys understand that I better be on top of it because there's other guys. Now. There, there's a little longer line in each one of these position groups this year as opposed to year one where guys have to be on the up and up. And so uh, I think production is a big one, uh, getting to that quarterback and just consistency and toughness. What so is bringing Shelby and his development? Does he have a chance to, to crack the mix this year? Uh, I think he does. You know, I, I mean, we're still early just because, you know, uh, he missed spring ball. Obviously, he didn't get here until the summer. Um, and so he just completed his first eight or seven or eight or ten days of a fall camp, you know, and, and that's a that's a that's an adjustment. But we, you know, I've been really excited about him. Really pleased. He's flashed for sure on tape. He's big. He's long. He can run, uh, and and, he, and he's figuring it out as he goes. So I think uh, most definitely he has a chance to, to to get in there and be in the mix this year.